We are almost at 94% state of charge with the Jackie Powerball fully charged from solar. Look at this weather. I guess uh, welcome back to the off-grid garage here in sunny, hot Australia. 29 degrees today, beginning of spring, beautiful for solar and battery testing. And this is exactly what we are going to do today. So we are going to fully charge the battery today and do a capacity test, see how many ampere hours and kilowatt hours we get out of it. We are close to 55 volts now. I have not changed any of the standard parameters so far. Let's have a quick look again. Well, the only thing I prepared last night was changing the cell over voltage protection to 3.65 and also change the pack under voltage protection to 40 volts because we want to fully discharge the battery either if one of the cells hits 2.5 volts or the pack voltage is under 40 volts which is the same this will then stop the capacity test and then we have our result so balancing comes on at 3.45 volts and we are charging to 56 volts then and then go slowly higher and see how far we can actually charge this battery until one of the cells hits the cell over voltage protection. At the moment, none of the cells has hit 3.45 volts. We are at 10 millivolt deviation and at 55 volts right now. So that's already a pretty good result. Okay, it should take only a few minutes now until we hit 100%. So how this works in the Pace BMS, parameter settings you can see we have a pack full charge voltage this is our absorption or bulk voltage and this tells the solar charge controller to keep the voltage constant at 56 volts the bms then waits until the charge current into the battery tapers off to one amp and then it considers the battery as fully charged and with these two parameters you can fully customize the bms to your needs to your battery to your solar battery design and that's why these pace bms's are just incredible they just work they are perfect well kind of almost perfect but they work really well with these two settings just okay back to the monitoring 55.12 so we have now reached 55.2 volts this is the absorption voltage i have set in my battery shelf I'm not charging any higher. This gives us 3.45 volts per battery cell. And we can also see we have reached these uh, 3.45 volts already with cell number six here. But where's cell number six here? There's no balancing happening because our voltage difference is at 15 millivolt only. And the default standard parameter sits on 30 millivolt. So only if the cells are spreading further than 30 millivolt, the balancer will kick in. And they are still so consistent, close together, there's no need for any balancing. And this is at 55.3 volts. With the Seplos Polo batteries, we couldn't even charge that high. It stopped at 54 volts with a deviation of over 250 millivolt. But here we are at 55.5 volts now and have a deviation under 30 millivolts still. Great. Now we have just hit the 30 millivolt deviation and the balancer kicks in on cell number six. Looks like all the other, now this is, yeah, it looks like a very well matched and top balanced battery. Cell number three is kicking in now as well with the balancer. And we are now reaching the 56 volts, which will be our absorption voltage. There it is. And now we should see the current going down. It's tapering off now. So the cells are now absorbing. Now you can see the current is going down. So we are now in the constant voltage charging phase and the current is going down to one amp now. And then the BMS says, okay, this battery is fully charged. And then it also resets to 100% state of charge, for example, but leaves us all the power of the solar for our load. And again, I think there's no need to limit the charge current because you can see the charge current limits itself. So the charge current is now under 10 amps, under 9 amps actually, still keeping the voltage constant at 56 volts. And the voltage difference has actually lowered from 52, 53 volts to 44 only. So that would mean every time you fully charge this battery to 56 volts, it balances this cell voltage difference. And eventually you're ending up with a perfectly top balanced battery fully automatically without active balancer. So I'm just measuring the balance current of cell number one. 
and um, we can see it's going up and down that means the balancer is actually taking energy away but then stops balancing measures the voltage and then balance again maximum current i can see here is around 90 milliamps yeah this is in line from what we have measured before a little bit below 100 milliamps of balance current so we are now under one amp and it will take a couple of seconds until we reach or we have already reached 100 percent state of charge so the charged ampere hours have actually added up to the full capacity ampere hours and then it has reset to 100 percent automatically but once we go under one amp we will also see that the charge mosfets are turning off and the voltage difference has actually increased slightly because the current is now so low the charger has actually trouble now to recharge the cells with a lower voltage but over time it will actually balance you can see the voltage deviation is actually going down again so this could take now for another half an hour or so until we actually fully charge this battery what i might do at this point of time here i may increase the full charge voltage slightly and see when the first cell actually hits 3.65 volts because again this gives us a good idea of the consistency of the cells they have selected to build this battery so let's go into parameter settings and change this one to 57.8 so this will activate the charge controller again current will increase and so will our voltage difference but at some stage one of the cells will hit 3.65 volts and then we say okay now the battery is fully charged which is um very close we are at 3.6 ah here another feature of the pace bms as soon as we hit a cell over voltage alarm, just an alarm, which is at 3.6 volts here in this case, it stops charging. It says, oh, the cells are getting too high, I better stop charging. It is not turning off the charge MOSFETs in the BMS. It is also not limiting the power output of your charger or MPPT. They can still deliver power from solar to your load, but the battery says, no, I'm not going to charge anymore for the moment until we go into recovery voltage, which is in this case 3.58. So 3.6, so you want to actually set this one here to 3.7, basically disabling this function. Okay, charger has kicked in again, and now we are charging all the way up until we see a protection status here and cell over voltage protection, and then the charge MOSFETs will turn off and it turns off your charger as well. 16 amps into the battery. I think it is cell number 16, which is high. Okay, the camera didn't turn on for some reason, but you have seen we have now reached the cell over voltage protection. BMS goes into protection mode, disconnects the charger, charge MOSFETs are off. And in this case, it also sets the charge current limit to zero amps here, because we are in a protection mode now. But an extreme situation, because we are in a protection state, we have reached a cell over voltage protection, which you usually under normal circumstances don't reach. Okay, we have now fully charged the battery as it came from the manufacturer and we are going to discharge the whole battery now into the Tesla measuring ampere hours and kilowatt hours. Yeah, that's right. So as always, we have to turn off our solar because we don't want to add any additional energy while we are discharging, right? It's only coming from the battery, only. I have also installed the Smart Chan test at this battery now can see we are at 100% state of charge, 56 volts. Statistic is all reset. And I've also set the capacity to 103 ampere hours. So we can actually measure quite precisely with this smart shunt. All right, let's go into the Tesla. Yeah, the XIA inverter was still turned off. <laughs> okay, eight amps. I think we have to go down to five amps here to see the actual 20 amps discharge current we want because we want to discharge the battery with 0.2 C. So it's a 100 ampere hour battery. One C would mean the full capacity, so 100 amps. And these tests are usually conducted with a 0.2 C rating only. Five amps going down to five amps, and this will limit our current here to 22 amps. Perfect. 22.6 amps, perfect. 
So this test will take about five hours. It will be, it will be dark. All right, you have a wonderful afternoon and we see us later again when we are close to disconnect and see how much we get out of this battery. My friends, we are coming to an end. The inverter shows us 47.9 volts. We are discharging with 25 amps at, uh, we are at 48 volts pack voltage. Deviation is 44 millivolt. So slightly increasing now, once we get down into this steep down area of the curve. And we got the low state of charge alarm, which uh, we have set to 10%. So this is the red light, which is flashing on the battery. We have consumed 100.4 ampere hours. So we have actually reached the specification of this battery already. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, 5.2 kilowatt hours. It is only rated for 5.1. Fantastic. And here it says we've got another one ampere hour left until we reach the full capacity of 103.58 ampere hours just under 48 volt now 50 millivolt deviation we are down to 46 volts the fans are going slow 85 millivolt deviation we have 102.3 ampere hours we have pulled from this battery which is uh, 5.3 kilowatt hours wow and cell number 12 is our lowest cell for quite a while now so i guess this will be our 2.5 volt low voltage disconnect unless the inverter turns off earlier which could be the case actually again because the deviation is not that high so that means all the cells are pretty well matched and are still close together even at 45.3 volts and we are still pulling 27 amps the pack low voltage alarm comes on now under 44 volts the inverter shows 43 volts. I think it will turn off any moment. We have pulled 103.3, 103.5 ampere hours and 5.3 kilowatt hours from this battery so far. Any moment, it is done. Oh, cell number 12, 2.54. I think we are disconnecting with a low voltage disconnect of cell number 12. No, we didn't. The inverter has turned off. 103.6 ampere hours, which is 5.3 kilowatt hours. Incredible. Wow. Ah, now actually we have, look at this, cell under voltage protection. So cell number 12 has hit 2.5 volts, has turned off the whole show. Wow. So we're actually reaching the 103.58 ampere hours with this battery here. Incredible. And the voltage difference was over 200 millivolt at point of disconnect as well. But now we are at the lowest, the lowest part of the discharge curve. And with your daily cycles and usage of this battery, you would never go this low with your voltage and state of charge anyway. So very good. Oh, this way. So very good. I'm again very, very happy with the result of the capacity test of another Jacuper battery here in the off-grid garage in sunny, hot Australia. Amazing quality of these batteries. And you can still get the 8% discount of these batteries, regardless if it's the Powerball or the Server Rack 100 ampere hours or the Server Rack 230 ampere hours. 8% off the price for the first eight orders in Australia, in Europe, and in the North America. And Checkipo has also stock of all these batteries here in Australia. And regardless how many you order, you pay only once for shipping. So fantastic offer, fantastic service, fantastic battery and quality. And of course, they have warehouses in North America and Europe as well. So if you are in any of these three regions, you can get these batteries with very low shipping costs and also very quickly, possibly within a week. Okay, so there's only one test we need to do, the current limiter test. This battery is now completely empty at 42 volts or something. And we have connected three other batteries here, which, which are at around 50% set of charge. So we have a voltage difference here of around seven to eight volts now. And we will turn on one of these batteries now. Okay, 44 volts, zero amps. Okay, let's turn on the 230 ampere hour battery. 
and see what you and see what current we get 176 amps and now the current limiter has kicked in protecting the battery protecting the bms and it charges now with 22 amps only yeah here you can see it as well 22 amps and the current limiter is turned on so whenever the battery exceeds the maximum charge current instead of turning the battery off it limits the current to 20 amps only it's a fantastic safety feature because otherwise we would have seen currents of over 200 amps now into this battery all right guys so far this testing of the checkipper powerwall for the last two days three days actually including charging and this concludes the testing of pre-assembled batteries here in the off-grid garage for quite a while all these boxes here are do-it-yourself stuff we will however have another look at the Seplos Polo battery but there will be a lot of do-it-yourself stuff involved as well because we want to change these batteries a little bit to make them kind of work more about this in one of the next videos though thank you so much for watching thanks for all your great support here on the channel for all these wonderful people who have donated buying me a beer from time to time or even on a regular base but don't worry i'm not becoming an alcoholic i'm calibrating a spat from time to time only and until the next video guys when we do something a bit different here you stay charged stay safe and thanks again for watching see you then bye bye the discount code and all the information are under the video.